Hi guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. So for today's video, I have been working on my research for this for a few weeks now. I'm going to be doing an update on all of the products that I bought during the Sephora VIB sale. I posted two hauls of the items that I picked up. I have a video of myself trying on some of the products. Now, almost a month later, I am back to give you my thoughts after I've had a lot more time to play with the items. So if you are interested in hearing all of my thoughts on a lot of new products that I've picked up, then just keep watching. Wednesday you guys I hope you all are doing well I'm really excited about this video because these products have been set aside for a month now and I'm ready to get them into my collection but I had them set aside so that I would be reminded to constantly be reaching for these products so that I could come back with a very accurate update there's a lot that you learn from a product every time you use them so during the sale I picked up two face primers both of which were repurchases for me so I already know I love them I picked up the Charlotte Tilbury magic cream one of my favorite everyday lightweight moisturizing pre-makeup items and then a new Smashbox photo finish primerizer. I'm still working on finishing this one up. Those two are amongst my favorite of primers because they're very moisturizing for the skin. I don't want to spend too much time on them just because I've used them for forever. So I picked up three foundation or base products. The first one that we have is the Estee Lauder Futurist Hydra Rescue Foundation. I know a lot of you are curious about this one. I was for quite some time and that's what led me to pick it up. I have mine in the shade 2W1 Dawn and I really do like this foundation. I think I'm going to really like it over this summer. It does provide a medium coverage and it gives you a very glowy finish. The one thing that I do have to say about this is it is not long wearing on me. If you're looking for something that has this dew but it has a longer wear time, I would suggest mixing it with the regular double wear foundation because that foundation doesn't budge. That's going to give you the dew that this has and then it's going to give you the lasting power. Now obviously it's not going to be as dewy but that's just the way to get the perfect medium. So I do really like this. Very lightweight, very pretty on the skin. It just doesn't last the longest. So that's the reason why it's not like a super favorite of mine. I also picked up the Hourglass Vanish Stick. I got mine in the shade Light Beige. And this is such an old classic product that so many of you have tried. And I have to admit to you guys, I really don't like this as much as I was hoping I would. I definitely find it to be a lot more thick on my skin. I know a lot of you guys said going with a brush or something more dense to really blend it out and it does blend out fine but I feel like it could blend out better. I feel like I can just really see it sitting on my skin. I like more of a skin like finish to me. This isn't skin like. For this product in particular less is definitely more but when I apply less I get less coverage. So I like this with less product but then I kind of lose the coverage aspect of this and overall it just took some time to get this to work for me. This is a product where I like it enough to keep it in my collection and use it because sometimes Sometimes stick foundations are just easier but once I'm done with this I probably won't repurchase it. The last item that I have that a lot of you guys were actually curious about is the Ilia Super Serum Skin Tint. I got mine in the shade ST8 Sheila. This product when I first tried it out it is just a tint. You would see in my trying on video that this provided me with little to no coverage and I do have problematic skin where my skin just I have acne and for me since I don't have perfect skin I want something that's going to cover a little bit more. What I would say this provided for me was more so of a very pretty glow to the skin. A little bit overly so to where if I actually went out and started sweating, I would look sweaty and oily. But it does provide a natural glow to the skin. It feels really nice on the skin, but I wasn't getting much from it. I felt like it was a product where you could only really love if you have really perfect skin. I have some updates to come back to you with that I didn't mention in that video. I said I was going to try mixing it with other foundations foundations and you guys this is amazing for mixing up foundations one thing you need to make sure you're doing is shake it before you use it it can become a little bit white as it sits so make sure you mix it good I didn't mix it good enough today but I actually found that I love mixing this with the hourglass vanish stick these two are incredible. This makes this stick so easy to blend out. You'll see in the demo, it makes my skin look 
skin like it completely gets rid of that thick and cakey look that I feel like the hourglass gives and just these two together they melt together beautifully I have such a beautiful glow to my skin not overly so this one I felt my skin almost look too glowy this takes that away but the dryness that this almost adds to my skin is cured with the glowiness of this it's just these two are so great so if you're struggling with a tricky stick foundation put a little bit of this on the skin it's the perfect mixture even with this like I still had the cover that the stick provided and oh, they are just so beautiful together so if you have a really thick foundation especially sticks but even liquid foundations this is beautiful to mix in especially for dry skin as well so this for me amazing I love it just be careful I can't guarantee that this is going to mix well with every single foundation it just depends if the ingredients mix well with each other but these two are amazing now I love this this is like a secret weapon for me. So the next item we're talking about is the Charlotte Tilbury Under Eye Corrector. I got mine in the shade Fair. I wish I had gotten the shade Up, which is medium, because I feel like this is just a little bit too light for me. Well, I do like the shade because it is brightening. I feel like the next shade Up is more peachy, so that would actually be more color correcting. I really enjoy this product. I even will use it on my spots all over my face or I use it to kind of subdue some redness before I put on a lighter coverage foundation. So this is a very versatile product for me. I wouldn't mind going back and just getting another color. I really like the formula of this. I do find with thinner, more emollient concealers, this can lead to a little bit more creasing on your under eyes, but with thicker, more robust kind of concealers, this doesn't affect it at all. Overall, I just really think this is a really nice product. I like how brightening it is. Under the eye and I really do think it makes a difference I love it all over my face very very good product definitely impressed with this love the texture of it very smooth and now let's talk about the Kosas concealer I got mine in the shade 3.5 I wish I had gone one color down because I think that one is a little bit more neutral <sighs> the more time I've had to play with this I really have a love-hate relationship with this product. I love the texture and the consistency of this product. I love how it blends out. I don't like the color range. I find that the color range runs very yellow. This shade in particular is pure yellow, so I feel like it's not as brightening as it could be, and I'm not super big on brightening concealers, but the yellowness of it is so yellow to the point where it makes my skin kind of look sallow. Yellow is good for a little bit of color correcting, but this is just too yellow. It doesn't look completely right, so less is more with this concealer especially due to the shade. I also found that it was a bit finicky to get it to work to how I wanted it. So some days I absolutely loved this concealer. I thought it was really great and then other days my under eyes were just so creasy. These two together crease a lot. With some under eye setting powders, my eyes would crease like crazy. With other under eye powders, my eyes would barely crease. This is just a very finicky product. Some products work with it, some don't. In some cases, this is just better to use alone with nothing else without setting. That's probably when I like this product the most. So this definitely has some pros and cons to it. I would say overall, now that I've had it for a while, it's probably not worth all of the trouble that I have with it, which is unfortunate because I love the way this blends out. But for me, not my favorite. So now let's move into the cream products that I bought for the face. Creams are in. Everybody is loving cream bronzers, cream blushes, and cream highlights. So of course, I picked up a few shades from the new Fenty cream release. I did do a whole review on all of the products that I got, so I will link that down below because I do give you some very useful hints and tips, and you can see all of the colors on my skin because I demo them for you. I did say in a few videos, I think that this was breaking me out. At this point I'm not sure because I used it twice and I got very weird acne spots in places that I wouldn't normally get them and I was like okay it's definitely <laughs> the cream bronzer and I told you guys and then I used it after that and then all of a sudden I wasn't breaking out anymore as soon as I say something it seems like the product stops breaking me out so I don't know if this breaks me out or not lately it hasn't been breaking me out but that's just my update on that as always I don't know what breaks me out. I try, I experiment, I take away products, I add products, and there's no correlation with my skin, I swear. But anyways, I picked up two of the cream bronzers. I got the shade Amber, and I did not like the shade. It was so gray, it made me look dead. And so many of you guys were fighting with me. They were like, it says it's for fair skin. I was just experimenting, okay? It's not that deep. I bought it for experimentation purposes, and I was going to return this because unless you're really fair, this isn't gonna work for you. But I actually kind of like mixing it with the other shade that I got, which is Butter Biscuit. So I really love Butter Biscuit. 
I think I would have liked a shade up. This next shade up is Macchiato, and I think that one is a little bit too deep, so mixing those two would have been perfect. I'm very happy with Butter Biscuit. These are very emollient. I do like to set them with some powder, though, because they don't really dry down to how I would like. But I do find that when I put amber underneath just a little bit in the hollows of my cheeks, and then I put this on top, there is a little extra element of sculpting happening. So I have been enjoying pairing these two together, and since they're the same formula, they blend really well together. So that is why I've kept amber in my collection, and I just think these two colors kind of go very well. They do add a little bit of shading to my face. And then I absolutely loved the cream blushes. They gave such a youthful glow to my skin. I got Rose Latte, Petal Poppin, and Cool Berry. My favorite shade, I think, is Rose Latte because it gives a really sunburnt look to the skin. That's just really natural. These are beautiful products. They blend out beautifully. I like to apply them with a sponge. If you're more fair or have a lighter skin tone like myself, less is more with these products because they can build up in pigmentation. But again, if you are interested in seeing the other colors and seeing these in action, definitely check out my review on these. The last cream product that I got was from Kosas, and this is the shade Eighth Muse. And this I was not aware of, so you guys actually taught me this, but I bought this color Eighth Muse in the Intensity shade. So in my original review of this, or the first time I talked about it, I put it on my skin. I really liked it, but I just thought it would look so much better on medium to deep skin tones. And lo and behold, I realized I bought the Intensity version, which is made for darker skin tones. And you know what? I think that's incredible that this brand does this. So there is an eighth muse that is not the intensity shade, which would be more fitting towards my skin tone. And the shade that I have eighth muse here is really geared towards deeper skin tones. Now this does work for me. I actually am wearing it today and I really love the formula of this, but I definitely am curious as to what the non-intense version of this is because I do have to use a light hand. But kudos to Kosas for creating two different tones for different skin tones. I think that is incredible and it makes me love the brand so much more and love this product so much more. Once I'm off my low buy, I definitely am looking forward to buying more of these just for the fact that they have an intense version and a not intense version because so many brands are afraid to do that and to me it just says so much about the brand itself and okay, the formula is amazing as well. I really enjoyed this product a lot. Highly recommend. I did also pick up two bronzers that are powder. The first one I've talked about plenty so I don't want to cover it too much. I did also buy the Kosas uh, Baked Bronzer in the shade Light. I really love this. It's very light, it's very natural on my skin, and it gives you a very nice natural glow. Today I put it on top of my cream bronzers from Fenty. I just love this alone. Setting cream bronzers, it's so beautiful. It's great for every day. It's not too intense. It's a beautiful formula. It blends out. On one of my lives, one of you were like, Tati says she doesn't like this bronzer. I said it on the live, and I'm gonna say it now. We all are entitled to our own opinion but Tati's wrong because this is really really good. I really love this bronzer. I disagree with her. I also picked up this NARS Paradise Found Bronzing Powder and I told you I wasn't going to use it because I was going to use it but I wanted some time to do some product shots with it and I haven't had the time to create some product shots with this so it does remain unused so I'm sorry I can't give you an update on this but seriously for me and what I do and my channel and my Instagram makeup is not just for using it's for looking at enjoying and taking pictures of as well. I did pick up one powder blush as well and this is the Charlotte Tilbury Cheek to Cheek Swish and Pop blusher in the shade Love Glow. This is a really great blush for fair skin tones. I have multiple of these blushes and these formulas already. I recently filmed The Ultimate Guide to Charlotte Tilbury. These are one of the items that I talked about. These are great blushes, honestly. I just added another color to my collection and it's a really light, everyday, great pink color. So, of course I love this. This is awesome. I also picked up the Tom Ford Skin Illuminating Powder Duo in the shade Mood Light. So you kind of have a deeper color here and then a lighter color here. Surprisingly, I found that this shade had a little bit more reflex to it. So even though you think it would be more natural, everyday kind of color, it actually has more shine to it. Whereas this gives you a lighter glow, but it's not as reflecty. I really like 
like this. I think this is really nice. It is a lot of money. I don't necessarily think you need it or you're going to die without it, but definitely as a highlighter, I enjoy this a lot. I've been grabbing for it a lot. It really blends into the skin. It looks very natural. It gives you a glow from within look, but you can also build it up to give you some extra pop to it. I feel like this has a lot of versatility. Whatever you use to apply it, however you apply it, really dictates to how this is going to look on the skin and what your preferences are. So I love how versatile this is. The quality of it's really good and it's really pretty and I definitely don't regret picking this up. Let's talk eyeshadow palettes. Of course I picked some up. First we're going to talk about the one that I'm wearing in today's video and this is one of the few that I didn't demo. So this is the Supreme Nudes from Artist Couture. There's been a lot of hype around this palette and let me tell you for good reason. I did post an IGTV of me using the mattes but I have since tried the shimmers and it is a really great palette. Very approachable colors for me and my color palette and what I prefer. I think this is really beautiful. I definitely have been grabbing for this a lot. I feel very comfortable with this palette and the quality of this is really good. The mattes are buttery smooth. They blend very well and the shimmers are nice and shiny. They are not lackluster. They feel really nice and creamy so I don't have anything bad to say about this palette. At first I wasn't going to buy it because I didn't need these colors in my collection but I do not regret purchasing this at all because it's just such a good quality palette. For reference today I'm wearing wearing eccentric in the crease, aesthetic in the outer corner, mink in the very very outer corner for some extra depth. I have bronziana all over the lid and then lavish in the center of my lid for a gold pop and I just got a very pretty everyday bronzy kind of look great palette. I also picked up two Tom Ford eye quads. The first one that we have is Arabesque. Now Arabesque, I have to say, it's not my favorite of the Tom Ford quads in my collection. It's very light, it's very subtle, it gives you a subtle glitter to the lid. I do find I wish that the shades had a little bit more pigmentation to them, especially the two shimmer shades right here. Pretty palette, great for every day, just not my favorite in the line. Now the one that I do like more is De La Cream. So this one, it's kind of boring, but I like that it's boring because this is such an easy everyday palette. If you have an office job and you just want everyday natural kind of makeup, this is a great one to go to. You're going to get a great everyday office look no matter what you do, no matter what color you put on. Buttery smooth, great Tom Ford formula. Underwhelming colors, but sometimes that's what you need. So I'm very happy that I picked up De La Cream. I do prefer this over Arabesque. And then I picked up two more Charlotte Tilbury quads. I love these. I always pick them up while they're on sale. So the first one that I got is Vintage Ramp. And this this one I did demo. These ones have more maroon kind of colors, so if you prefer more reddish maroon warm colors, you're going to really like this one. Since I'm more of a cooler toned fan, this isn't my favorite palette in the entire line, but it's very, very pretty. Don't get me wrong, and a lot of you guys seem to really love the look on me. So it's a very good color story that we have here. Not the most unique, but it's still very, very pretty. So this one is very nice. Um, I also picked up the Bella Sophia, and I love this one so much, you guys. So it looks like nothing special in the pan, but on the eyelids, you guys, I'm in love with this palette. This gold shade in particular, something about these glitters in here really stand out on the eyelid. I just absolutely love the looks I've created with this quad. Of all the Charlotte Tilbury quads I own, this is definitely ranking probably in the top five. I really, really love this one. And, you know, you really have to apply them to the eyelid to see what you think, but truly enjoy this one. Um, and then you guys did see I got three other colors of the eyeliner duos from the eye color collection from Charlotte Tilbury. I've really been enjoying these. I've really been enjoying seeing how I can incorporate these into looks. I've gotten used to the matte side not being creamy and soft. Even though they're not as creamy as some other formulas, they do last a very long time and the colors are so unique that it makes up for it. And the metallic sides as well. I find these to be quite more pigmented than the green one and I've been enjoying either putting these all over the lid putting them underneath powder shadows or just putting them along my lower lash line. So I've been enjoying these. They're a fun way to experiment with adding different color eyeliners to your look and these have definitely inspired me to play around with eyeliners some more. For lips, the only lip items that I purchased were from Artist Couture and guys, I love these lipsticks. I think that he came out with a really fabulous line of nudes. Right now, I'm wearing Saucy Girl which is the darker nude of the two that I've purchased and I mean, this is just a really nice ideal 
feel every day nude to me. It's not warm, it's not cool, it's the neutralist kind of nude. It's going to look really good on medium skin tones, light skin tones, deep skin tones. This is a really great nude. And then the other one that I purchased was Angel Baby, which is the lightest one. And this is a great center of the lip nude to add dimension to the lip. Like, do you see how stunning that is? It's a nice creamy formula. It doesn't give you too much of a sheen on the lips. It actually looks a little bit more of a demi matte kind of finish. And overall, really good formula, really great colors. Highly recommend looking into this line of nude lipsticks. I think these are just wonderful. Uh, I did leave out a couple of items, I believe, like the Vizzy Art palette. I just haven't tried that yet. And the hair product. Those are underneath my sink right now. But the last thing that I did try that I do have some information on is the Sol de Janeiro Eau de Parfum that I purchased. Guys, I just love the smell on this, but I will say one thing that I don't like is I feel like this doesn't wear the longest and it should because I spent a lot of money on this even while it is on sale. So I don't think this is worth the full price at all just because quality wise, it's not very long lasting, but the smell is so enjoyable to me and I got it on sale. So for that reason for me, this is worth it. But just know to answer your questions, this doesn't have the longest wear time on your skin, but it smells beautiful. All right guys, so I have covered all of my products that I've hauled from this season's Sephora VIB sale. I hope you guys enjoyed me really coming back, explaining the products in depth and how I like to use them. If you are curious about these products, I will link all of my videos pertaining to this season's sale down below. If you aren't subscribed to my channel yet, I really would appreciate it if you would take the time to do so if you would like to see more from me. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye guys, have a good one!